Good morning, B Keeps. What's up? The girls are working the sub. What do we got in here? <laughs> Get out of there. There's nothing in there. They cleaned it out, guys. They had a little bit left and I shook it out. We got to retop out our jar, our locate jar here. Yeah. Got a few projects going on today in Steve-O's world here. Old Steve-O's world. I don't think that camera's going to sit there. Let's fill up this feeder here real quick. They seem to like this stuff. Ultra B pollen substitute. I'm getting low. We need to order more. Yeah, my next Man Lake order, I better order some more of that. We don't want these we don't want these girls slowing down for nothing. I see they're landing on what I left here. They're picking that up pretty nice. Let's top out this locate jar here. If I can find out which one. It's on the hanger here. There we go. There we go. Let's go in the barn here and plug in this thing. I've been going through a lot of syrup, guys. I'm telling you. A lot of syrup. I've been putting a, a dash of... Uh, Here's my little seat right here. I've been putting a, I don't know, about that much. Just grab some sea salt and I throw in there. My ant moats, Martin, are working great. We see no bull ants in here whatsoever. This interior piping, guys, is all three quarter. But all you need, all you need for a a valve is a quarter inch quarter inch ball valve works good it works great and you can see how fast it fills a jar up you have nice control on it but if you put one of these in guys you put one of these in it's just all brass. It's a brass ball valve. It's reduced from three quarter to quarter on the inside, and I put a little uh, silicone on it, and a 90 and a nipple. Don't forget this nipple. You don't get the drippage so much if you have this nipple on there. So put just a small brass nipple in there, and you're good to go on that. So what do we do? We just come over here and hang this little puppy right here. Right here next to the pollen feeder. There we go. There we go. They'll find it just fine. They'll mass all over this thing. There you go. Now I got it adjusted about right. See, now they're right here. 
they're on a big cluster they know they say oh that's the oh look at here we got some of this here action all the drippage you get a lot of drippage every time a mass of bees there's only one small hole there's only one small hole in there it's about an eighth of an inch hole that's it but they'll get a wad of bees on there and they're just fighting to get that little drip this lasts about three days and you'll get a huge mass of bees on there and then they'll fall off and the syrup comes in but they don't lose nothing now i've been getting some heavy rains here and i come out in the morning if it rains at night this thing will be all the way to the top i just dump it out and and add some more fresh pine needles in there which i have plenty so this keeps them going quite nicely here with this deal uh it's weird is my other yard i have the same setup but they'll drink all the syrup and they're not hitting the pollen sub over there so much these bees here at this yard are hammering the pollen sub that pollen sub i just put in three scoops in there it'll last maybe a week is all if that this will last two or three days on that quart jar so this is a simple way to get them to over here to locate this stuff and eat it up all righty guys we're in the classroom steve-o's classroom don't you just love it when you get in my classroom what has steve-o got here what has he got here look at this thing now you can buy these guys they got little nails like coming down right they're about this tall but then they got nails coming down <laughs> and what you do with this just come to your honeycomb or your comb where your queen's at and you find her and carefully get her right in there centered and you push that down being very careful you're not getting the queen head pinched off and then you just push this keep pushing this into the comb carefully this has got a nice soft soft screen on it and actually it came off that old veil right there the bottom portion of that raggedy veil i just cut a piece off and uh rigged this up and what this is is a uh is a green tea bottle cap and what i did is put a knife slit in it and then i got some aviation snips and i went very i nipped it went around nipping it then i took a little uh wood burner uh tool and got it hot and went around there melting that edge a little bit before i put the screen on but what i did was put the screen on that netting over there and i stole this from miss daisy she said i could have it though this is her onion bag and you can see the mesh on this onion bag is a tad tad bigger tad bigger than this that was on that veil just small but i don't think we're going to have any issues of any bee especially a queen trying to come through that mesh so what i did on um, that veil material i stuck it inside this cap when i got it melted the way i wanted it and i pulled it down like this right and i twisted it a little bit like this then I took some B50 bowstring material, you could use any string for that matter, fish line, whatever, and I made a knot here. And then I cut it off here with scissors right about here. And then I stuck it in the vise over here to where I could grab this and pull it with one hand. The vise is holding this tail in. And I put some B50 here, but I left two tails on it, long tails one over here and the other tail i just kept winding around and around and kept tightening 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 so this thing was super tight on here right that was tight up on there and then i took gorilla glue i took gorilla glue with i had this long tail hanging out here and i could hold it here see and that's what it's gonna have to look like and then I start spot welding it with super glue around there. Careful not to get any on the netting because you don't want nothing over here, get any hard edges over here at all. But you want to keep t turning this until this is nice and tight and stretched, see? And then you gorilla glue along this edge till you get it all good. And then I took the extra and I had the, the bone 
zip tie on that fan there and I took made a loop on this and I let, so let it hang by there but you got to watch it so you don't have any drips big drips coming down keep an eye on it if you do have any drips take a stick or something toothpick or something and wipe it off so you don't get any on this so you don't get any on this screen here and you can make a catcher now I'm gonna make another one and what I've got here instead of fooling around with a bottle cap where I've got to melt where I had to melt this edge and all that nonsense I said there's got to be a little better way and then the light bulb came on and I had some extra pipe laying around this happens to be schedule 40 you could use thin wall would be better any thin wall pipe like conduit thinner wall the better this happens to be inch and a half schedule 40 well it's what I had in stock and you can see here it's, it's a tad bigger the OD on this is a tad bigger than this cap here so I'm going to build another one of these I could build a ton of these things for other beekeepers and then I'm going to be pulling this over now I went to my grinder and instead of having a big old thick edge like that because you got to push this into the wax right to, to trap that queen so before I cut this off this sliver I want to create a knife edge on there so now I've, I went on the grinder and just slowly turned it turned it turned it and got this nice knife edge here this will cut right into the wax on the wax frame okay so now what I'm going to do is set up my chop saw and I'm going to chop it probably the thickness of this cap here I'll probably cut it to right here with my chop saw and I'll have just a little glue edge you don't want it too fat because you've got to push this down this will be going in and your screens going to be over here so you want it you don't want to get too too fat here you'll hit the center line of your plasticell and it may not be enough to pinch your queen under here but you don't push it in hard you got to be really slow and delicate with this because you just want to have a good close iron get her on the inside and in the center of this screen area and push down till she just gets immobile then then you grab your marker your competitive your competitive edge competitive I'm sorry competitive advantage MPD-15 paint marker this year happens to be red so now you can come right in really nice with this marker while she's there and put a nice little dot on her just like that right on that thorax just just nice little dot right there that's all you need lift up lift this up slightly out of the wax so she can walk around in there let that dry it won't take long it won't take long for that to dry and then take this off and let her walk around in your colony so that's the little trick I'm going to be doing uh, that's trick number one trick number two look what I found I didn't even know they made these things this is the beauty because what I like to do is have my light right here I have a light and a marker it goes right into that loop right there so this is this is a beauty and then you got it pops out now you can mark your whatever information on the top of your lid be lid with this with the others you got to fiddle around fiddle fart around putting the cap back on now how long these last I don't know like I said I just got I picked up two of them I picked up two of them so these would be this this mark will have to be in my pocket but that's no big deal and it has a cap you got to put on and off but the cap well, you get you got your holding your queen down or whatever you can always put this in your mouth even though your veils on you can put this in your mouth and then mark your queen and so forth and so on but yeah I thought these were really cool 
Okay, that's that little trick. Now, what else is Steve-O doing playing with today? Always playing around. I know, I know, I know, guys. What's that crazy old man up to today? I know, I know how you feel. All right, here's another thing. Now, Don out there, one of my subscribers, thank you, Don. He was telling me about, the conversation came up about Peppermint candy in the high. Well, I got to looking into peppermint candy and I bought a bag and you saw me chopping it up the other day. What a pain in the ass that was. Don's saying that you can actually soak uh, peppermint extract in, with soak toothpicks and peppermint extract and use the toothpicks in the hive instead of the candy works as well he said so instead of doing that Don I was at the craft store Wall Wally World China Mart and I came up with these wooden sticks these sticks are four and a half inch long by the way I got 200 I got 150 of these got 150 of these things for I think it was two dollars and change is all how do you how do you package that how do you make those for two dollars and change i have no clue guys but here's what i got took a pint jar and i got a bunch of them in there as you can see all right so now what are we going to do i picked up four of this when i was at wally's world i picked up four of these pure peppermint extract all right. Yeah. Two fluid ounces. Two fluid ounces, guys. I don't know how much it's going to take to do this, but whatever it is, it is. We're going to dump these in here. It looks like I could easily do another one. Brought it up to see the liquid in there. Let's do another one. Like I said, I have no clue how this is gonna work. But I like to experiment, right? It smells good. That brought it up a quarter. There's four ounces in there right now, guys. Let's save the other two. Let's put a lid on this. I love these. This is what I feed with. I, you know, I buy wide mouth jars for all my bee feeding for my small operation. When you get big and you start doing 10 feed and 10 frame boxes, this is not the way to go, obviously. You're gonna wear yourself out. They'll suck down a jar. A good strong 10 frame hive, even if you put one hole here, they will hammer that thing and, and suck it out a quart a day. So you might as well get you a gallon bucket. Some guys use two gallon buckets. Don't get too crazy with that though, because the stuff will ferment and, and I don't think the bees like to drink fermented stuff. But let's see, we can just turn this upside down, see? And get this going the other way sucking it up from both ends and we'll just sit here and see today uh how much we know we have four ounces in here right so we'll see these is going to be these sticks are going to suck up all of this stuff especially being with an alcohol base in there and what my plan is to do is put one of these sticks on each end of my beefy beehives at the top 
I got that much room on a beefy beehive between that ledge and, and, and the end, end bar. So there's plenty of room to drop one of these in here. And this is going to be a little bit more uh, surface area, obviously, than a toothpick. Uh, I'm not doing it to a bunch of hives at once because, like I said, it's an experiment. I don't want to choke anybody out with this stuff. I don't think a bees can take a lot of uh, shenanigans. They really can. Uh, everybody back in the day, oh God, everybody starts saying, oh God, PT, PT, uh, copper naphthate. Oh my God, don't use copper naphthate. You're just. Guys, we've made that stuff up by the 55 gallon drums and dipped the whole box in it. Yeah. I didn't see any contamination, and you got tons of beekeepers out there today doing that, okay? So, this would be a fun little experiment here on this. We'll see what happens. Uh, they say that the high beetles hate it. You won't have any high beetles in your, if you put those peppermint candies in there. I would think you would get the same reaction with these popsicle sticks here. But go to your craft store, go to your Wally World craft thing and get these craft sticks. That's the cheapest way to go right there. Just that you can treat a bunch of hives with this right here. How well this is going to work, I have no idea, but we're going to find out and you're going to see the results, okay? Let's get on to the next project. Okay, Miss Daisy's girlfriend stopped over and uh, she's made two of these for me before and uh, she, I told her I needed some more. She said, no problem, we'll fix you up. So she brought over her sewing machine and what I have here, you'll see a seam right here, down the side here. Uh, she just folded it over She first, first thing she did was create a pocket at the top and the bottom. You can see this pocket she created. And then she sewed down through here, but she left the end pockets open. So I can pass the string through each way. And the way I'm going to pass the string through is I'm going to cut a, I'm going to take a uh, zip tie, 14 inch zip tie cut the locking end portion off, melt a small hole through, put a piece of bowstring material on there, and then I'm going to drag my string through it. This is a great string too, and I haven't been able to find it. It's like a tight braid. It's a tight braid line. It looks like an eighth of an inch, strong as heck. And then you get a button you get a button like for the, for the end here, these push buttons you put on, and that's what tightens this veil up. I'm going to show you in a second how I put it on. Uh, yeah, this the measurements are two feet, two feet this way and four feet long, and you're going to double it. So this is the size net you've got here. There's plenty of room. That's what this net here is done up with. And I couldn't find that other material, so I went and got this. This is eight, this is at Lowe's. This is an eighth inch braid. And on the back end of this thing, the seam, the seam where she came around close to up, I put on the back side. So this is the back of the hat. You can get to Lowe's, get these this, get these sun hats here. This is Tully netting, by the way. Tully netting. You get it at, uh, got this at Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Yeah, let me show you how to put this on. Let me give you some measurements here on the string. The string is a bit of an overkill, but it's better to have over than under. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is about five and a half feet double. Five and a half feet double. It's a little overkill, but you can always just stuff the extra in your pocket. Now, this is a paracord. This happens to be a paracord here that runs through the whole veil. And on the, all I did, this is the front side over here. You end up with this loop over here. So this, this line here, let's see what this is doubled. You're looking at about, uh, I don't know, I would go uh, 30 inches, 30 inches doubled. 30 inches doubled, so that's 60. And you can see all I did here was just put a loop over, and this is what's popping out out front of your veil. This pops out through the front here. And all I did was take some uh, B50 black, use whatever, and just whip stitch it in. Once you pass this through, once you pass this through, you want a solid loop here. So you doubled it, put your loop on, have about two inches or so hanging out the front side. Then you pass the two lines, one down one way, one the other, and you pop out the back, and you just do an overhand knot there, right? Then you take the thread and you whip stitch that in to close that up. Then you take your line here, your long line, with what did I say, five and a half feet double, and you stick that loop and pass it back through there. So now you have all this. So to load this up the way I load it up, and this works great, like I said, this loop comes out the front here. You just pick up one of these sun hats down there at, at uh, Lowe's. And it's got a it's got a fairly nice uh, almost a wicking band in here. It's almost like a sweat band. It's a little pricey. Infinity something where this one happens to say small medium. Of course, you know where it's made. China. But the material in here is almost like a sweatband material. And this one here happens to be the rim to rim. As you're looking here, about 17, 17 inches. My helmet here, my old helmet here, the long way on this one, is only 14. I don't even, here lately, I haven't even been using that old helmet, plastic helmet, for the simple fact. This thing, we're in the heat of the summer, this thing breathes good. But you, when you buy these, make sure that there's no big holes, gaping holes up in here. Some of these holes, like here where they stitched it, there's enough to have a bee crawl through it. So you're doing the string all the way around to the bottom. And the top up here, I do the same thing. You've got a pocket up here. So I pass through the same situation. We have a, we have a seam here. So I pass the bunchy material, which is just a elastic material. You don't need much. And I pass it both ways and I pull it up in the back and just put a knot here in the back, and then I close it up with a whip stitch in the back. So you don't have, even though, even though uh, it seems like a lot of material, four foot long and two feet, you can see this thing only hangs down this far. So those numbers I'm giving you are about right for a veil. So all I do to put it on, I quickly look here, see where my seam is here in the back. I put that to the back, the string goes to the back. Throw it on my head like so. I take one strand of this, I throw the rest behind me. I really need to stand up to do this. So 
I'll throw this bunch of line behind me here, like so. I reach behind, I grab one leg of this. I come up over, I make sure my line's up over top of my Leatherman's and my phone case. Then I grab a belt loop here, lift it up, put it through, let it dangle. Come over here, grab this one. Sometimes I gotta pull my belt loop out because I can't get this under. Shove that under, pull that back, like so. I see so many guys just sucking this thing up around their neck. There they go. Okay, well, what happens? If you get in a vicious bee scenario, where are them bees going to go? They're going to come right up here to your neck, and they're going to nail this veil to your friggin' neck. Not good. Not good, no. Painful neck. Oh, yes. Painful neck. All right, so you got this leg over here. Come through your veil, like loop on the front side. Just one leg. Gather these two puppies up here like this. Grab your keeper button. Shove both legs through there and pull this up. Adjust this here off your shoulders. Grab this, pull it up. Boom, it holds it. Now, if it didn't hold it, if it starts slipping or whatever, you could put two of these buttons on there. But what I do is take the rest, shove it in my pocket. I take my Harbor Freight magnet. This is the magnet side. This is not. Put the magnet out. I, I keep my wallet in the front here. And normally when I'm working bees in a super hot weather, I take the wallet out. But take it and put it on top of your wallet. Now you got a place for your for your uh, hive tool. Take your marker here. Take your queen marker. Put it here. Take your Harbor Freight LED light and slide it in right here next to this. I have you got all your tools here. You got your hive tool here. You got your markers here, you got your queen marker in your pocket. The only thing I use this pocket for, guys, over here, is to load all this extra string. And there's not that much extra string, even though it was doubled five, what did I say, five and a half feet. This is all that's left. Just shove that in your pocket. There you go. This veil is off me now. You get in a strong wind and the bees are say a little vicious. This would come over and hit your face. Yeah, you may get tagged. But I'm out there, I usually do this and make sure, you know, if they're really getting ornery. I just take my veil occasionally. I just do it by habit. I just do it, you know, pull it like this. And you want it kind of straight. This veil I like the Tully netting for one reason, and that's because I can see through it. I can see through this fabric. Some of these veils you get a really tight weave. The only downside to this Tully veil is uh, snaggy branches. Say you're near oaks, working around oaks or, or even briars. If you hook a briar on this thing, you keep walking, you can rip a hole right in this thing. I did in this one here. And I was about to chunk it, and Miss Daisy looked at it, and she said, I can fix that for you. I just keep my extra one here. The thing, too, there's another one down there that Pam made me. The thing, too, if, if you ever rip one, these, li these lines, this line right here, guys, is about 15 years old. And like I said, this 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 material I don't know what it kind of braid it is but that's the nicest stuff in the world right there and I just keep trading it from veil to veil that that string just keeps on getting it so that's that Steve-O's class today 
Uh, let's go to the field. Let's go to the field, guys, and pick up at the other site. I've got two colonies. One I had to check on on uh, six four. The other day when I went in to add feed, and I just happened to have my smoker and my bale, I threw it on. Always, always carry that stuff with you. You never know when you won't need to get in a hive. Because I was over there just for a feeding mission, and I got there, and I said, oh, check. I had them on the top of the hive. Check 6.5, or 6.4. Fired up my smoker, went in there, and I seen the first frame I pulled, guys, was the prettiest uh, Italian Carnolian cross queen in there. And she was slamming it, guys, from top to bottom. Matter of fact, I got to get, I, I said, this is a breeder right here. They were putting up all kind of resources in there. And so she's coming back to the house here, back to base camp. And I'm thinking I'm going to use her as a breeder. There's another one, a double stacker in there. I think it's top to bottom, blowed out. I'm going to take another base unit because I don't like hauling those uh, five framers stacked. No, you know, I, I have ratchet straps. I could suck it down and load it, but it's just too top heavy for doing that and you you don't want to slam one of those on his top going down the road i know i could rope it over and all but i'm taking another base unit and that whole top portion i'm transferring all those bees over into another base unit lidding it up shrink wrapping it and getting it back to base camp and then i can reassemble it here the plan is here uh to start doing a little grafting uh i've been buying some queens but why buy queens uh if you know i need to, i wanted to get some more genetics in this place okay so that's the whole thing the reason behind it i get some more genetics here bloodline and yeah you need to mix it up guys you need to mix it up you find some good bugs breed from them so i've got some material over there and I, my thought is bring her, her back, that Italian uh, carny cross looking girl, and I can pull a uh, larva X, you know, for her, from her to graft and set up the double stacker as a uh, cell builder finisher utilizing a five frame um, cloak board that Martin built for me last time he was here. Or the time before, I forget. I think it was the time before, and I haven't used it yet. But I'm going to put it to work. Uh, I was hoping, I was hoping to use uh, a double stack ten uh, eight framer out here, but it hasn't materialized. It they're just not building up as fast as I wanted to. And I've been robbing resources, but these other colonies, we don't need to make many. If I made, if I made. 10 nice queen cells or even five nice queen cells i'm happy i'm happy we'll put them in we'll let them sit in this in this cell finisher starter finisher thing with a cloak once they once they get sealed up five or six days they're coming out of there and they're going in my incubator and we'll reassemble that hive. I don't need to just keep going, keep going. I don't need to do that. Just we'll make some bugs, we'll make some queens, and put that colony back together. So let me load up and we'll hit the highway. See you. Well, I just landed at my other bee yard here and uh, we'll get these bees loaded up. But I was going to fix and tell you that. I was at the uh, base camp bee yard there the other day, and as clouds were rolling in, I had to get bee work done. And oh man, them things have got cranked up, and they started hitting me. Of course, this time of year, I just like to wear a t-shirt with a little long sleeve cotton shirt over top. And they started hammering me, and I just get, I just finally said, "Settle down, you little bitches." And then, of course, I communicate with the bees telepathically because, you know, don't sneer, guys. Don't, I see you sneering. Don't sneer. 
so disrespectful when you guys sneer like that. Anyway, um, yeah, they were pounding me, and I settled down, you little bitches. And then all of a sudden, I heard telepathically, I heard the older guard bees tell the younger guard bees to stop. Just stop committing suicide. This old son of a bitch is ornerier than a honey badger. You're just committing suicide. Stop stinging him. And all of a sudden, guys, I heard them older, older guard bees. They're smarter. See, they've been around a while. They've been around uh, th three weeks, and usually they're dead in four weeks, right? They're over. They're they're too old to fight, and they just fall over dead. Anyway, yeah, and, and they told the younger guard bees, just chill out. Just chill out, you're committing suicide because that old son of a bitch can take more stings than a honey badger. And all of a sudden, everything calmed down. The whole yard calmed down, and I just continually worked bees. And I just had a little smile on my face because I knew, I knew them older guard bees had uh, told the young ones what's up with the old bee man. Okay, guys, I got one of my beefy beehives here. It makes kind of a nice hauling device too for your for your stuff I brought me I didn't know if I had any it don't look like I do a good thing I did it I bought me three plugs over which what we have here is a double we have a double here and I'm hoping this is slammed out with resources top to bottom it looks pretty hefty there we have this girl right here See, I have I had a uh, check for six, and I did that, and she's loaded with bees. Beautiful queen in there. We have uh, all these three here are check six twenties. What do we got here? Good lot of bees. Bunch of bees. Bunch of bees. So the mission today is load up that. I think I'm going to use that as a breeder. Okay. And I'm going to take that portion off and load that into a bottom chamber, which is on the back of my truck. We're going to put that lid down there. We're going to shrink wrap it. We're going to close that entrance. Same here. Close this entrance. Leave these three nooks. That'll open up room for more nooks here. We're going to take that back and use it as a, uh, if, if we'll get into it, and uh, see if that's going to be good for a, um, starter finisher cell builder i put up another stand here yesterday or day before i forget now the days just blend together right yeah see i level this all up and got my little ant moats on there guys this place is absolutely infested infested with bull ants this will stop them Long as you, as long as you're careful now. Watch, no, don't let a branch crawl over here and get into it. See these scratched out areas? This whole area scratched out, uh, all the way around this place. So these chickens come in here and just clean up everything. So, yeah, here's one of my old plugs. That's got the big two and three quarter jobby on it. Anyway. These all new hives. All everything we got now has got backer boards on them. See, I put here six four. Queen right breeder. Yes, sir. And I put breeder on this one too. All right, let's get these bees loaded up and get on out of dodge here. You see, guys, the beauty of this net here, the way I've got this drawstring in the back. The way I got this drawstring in the back, it pulls down. It pulls down tight in the back here, see? And it's pulling down tight in the front. So now this whole ring, string around here, is tight to your body. It's not stuffed up around your neck where you're gonna get hammered. A tip from old Steve-O. Check out this brood pattern, guys.
What do you think of that? Alrighty guys, we're all set to go here. I, where the double was, where the double was, uh, is, is that location. That colony there was here. I just slid it down to intercept all these field force here. The field force that was in this one here will come right here next door and get in, get in this hive right over here. So we're not gonna lose no bees nowhere. This, this particular box right here, boy, they do some propolising, guys. Wow. I guess that's all that Caucasian stuff I've got. I got a bit of Caucasian blood in this stuff too. But anyway, just make sure, guys, when you're hauling these, if you're running beefy beehives like mine, make sure you shrink wrap and then put you a piece of Gorilla Tape over the top of those plugs. Those plugs are feather light. They'll just blow right out. But that's got it secured. And uh, we're ready to rock and roll here. Back to base camp. And we'll set these girls back up. This will be off by itself on a single unit. I'm gonna look in here when we get to base camp and see if she needs another box. I think she needs another box on top of this. I want no reason, excuse for her not to slow down. I want her to keep pumping. Okay, guys, that's it for today. God bless you. Thanks for coming by the old base camp. And uh, all I can tell you guys, get out there and work in bees. We got a lot of summer left. They are, they are coming in hot and heavy, guys. Hot and heavy. Be happy, be strong. We got to keep getting her on. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.